Hey guys, today we're going to list all of the possible rational zeros of this function using the rational zero theorem, and then we're going to find all of the actual rational zeros using two methods, synthetic division and plugging it in. Let's go. Like I just mentioned, we're going to list all of the possible rational zeros by using the rational zero theorem. It says that you can find all of the possible rational zeros by dividing p and q. We're defining p as all of the factors of the constant in the polynomial. So in our case, it's 8. When we write all of the factors, it's going to be plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 4, and plus or minus 8. These are all of the numbers that you can multiply to get 8. That was p, and we're defining q as all of the factors of the leading coefficient, which is the number in front of the variable with the biggest degree. So in our case, it's 2. When we list all of the factors of 2, we're just going to get positive and negative 1 and positive and negative 2. So when we try to find p divided by q, you're trying to find all of the different combinations of all of these numbers divided by all of these numbers. Well, any of these numbers divided by plus or minus 1 is just itself. So a set of numbers that you can write down right away is plus or minus 1, 2, 4, and 8. But you'll also notice that q can also equal plus or minus 2. So if you divide plus or minus 1 over plus or minus 2, you're going to get plus or minus 1 half. However, if you look at the rest of these numbers, 2, 4, and 8, if you divide them by 2, you're going to get numbers that we've already listed here. Because 2 divided by 2 is 1, 4 divided by 2 is 2, 8 divided by 2 is 4, so we've already listed all of these numbers. So we've actually found all of the possible rational zeros for this function. And that means we've answered the first part of this question. Now we need to find all of the actual rational zeros. And when we first started this problem, we didn't know anything about the rational zeros or what they might be. And now using the rational theorem, we've narrowed it down to 10 possible numbers. So, for example, 1 may or may not be a 0. We don't know yet, but it's possible. In order to find the ones that are actual zeros of the function, we can use two different methods. I'm first going to show you synthetic division. And what you're going to do first is just pick any of these numbers, and we're going to test it out and see if it is a 0. I'm first going to pick positive 1. It's just a random number that I picked. And you're going to divide that by the function using synthetic division. Let's bring down the 2. 2 times 1 is 2. Negative 11 plus 2 equals negative 9. And so on. We got a remainder of 9, which means that it didn't divide evenly because we actually have a remainder. And positive 1 is not a 0 of this function. You just kind of have to keep picking numbers and dividing until you get a remainder of 0. So next, I'm going to pick positive 2. Let's see if that is a 0. You'll notice that we got a remainder of 0, which is perfect. Because it divided evenly, we know that positive 2 is actually one of the zeros. If your teacher is telling you specifically to find all of the zeros using synthetic division, this is how you would do it. We found one of the zeros, and you have to keep picking numbers until you find all of the other zeros. And you'll notice for this function that it's a degree of 3, so you know that you have three zeros that you need to find. We just found one, and there are two more out there in this list. Another way of doing it is to use the remainder theorem and plug in zeros. 
It starts off in the same way where you pick one of these numbers that you want to test out. For the sake of the example, I'm going to pick positive one again and we'll get the same outcome. What you're going to do for this method is plug in positive one everywhere you see x in this original function. So basically calculate f of one. And it's going to look like this. If you calculate it all out, you're going to get 9, which is the same exact remainder that we got from synthetic division. So we at least know we're doing it right. And because f of 1 does not equal 0, that means it's not a 0. In the same way, if you solve for f of 2, you're eventually going to get 0, which reaffirms again that 2 is a 0 of this function. So if your teacher asks you to plug in or use the remainder theorem to find the actual rational zeros, this is the method that you would use. Since there are two more zeros that we would need to find, you could keep choosing numbers from this list and plugging it in to see which one equals zero. However, there is a faster way you could do it. After you find your first zero, you can actually use factoring to find the rest of them pretty quickly. So you don't need to do synthetic division eight more times, or you don't have to plug in eight more times. And how you would do it is because you know that positive two is a zero, you know that x minus two is a factor of this original function. So you can rewrite this original function as x minus two times this. And I got this expression from when we did synthetic division. So right here. And how you would find the other two zeros is to just factor this expression out. I'm just going to do a guess and check here. The only two factors of this first term is 2x and x, so I just wrote them down. And thinking about the different factors that would multiply to negative 4, I'm going to choose negative 4 and 1. And now you can actually use this expression to find the rest of the zeros. So if you remember the definition of zeros, they're the values of x that would make f of x equal to 0. Essentially, this is three terms being multiplied, and if any of them equals 0, then it makes the entire function 0. So if x equals 2, then that makes this term 0, and the rest of the terms will also equal 0. This already reflects the 0 that we already found earlier, the positive 2. But now we have two other terms that we can work with. If you plug in negative 1 half for x, it'll make this expression equal 0, and the whole thing will equal 0, so you know that negative 1 half is a 0. And using the same logic, 4 is also a 0. So these three numbers are all of the zeros and it answers the second part of the question. Thanks for watching this video. If this helped you out, be sure to like and subscribe for more math tutorials like this. See you in the next video.